In this video, we're going to take a look at a circuit that contains a structure known as a supernode. A supernode is a, or consists of two critical nodes separated only by a voltage source. That voltage source can be either an independent source, as is shown here, or a dependent source. To understand what this leads to, let's um, go ahead and analyze this circuit as we would any other circuit using the node voltage approach. We start by identifying our critical nodes, one, two, three critical nodes. This one we have identified as our reference where V equals zero. And we've assigned this node here the voltage V1, or the variable V1, and this, vol the, uh, this node here, the voltage of that node, this we have assigned the variable V2. Now to understand what's happening, let's just go ahead and write the two node equations. For this left-hand node, we have the current leaving going to the left will be V1 minus four divided by two, plus the current coming down through the four ohm resistor will be V1 minus zero divided by four. Now here's where the challenge comes. When we look at the current leaving this node and going to the right, we see only a voltage source. There is no other device in here like a resistor that we can use to calculate the current. A voltage source and its current are unrelated to each other. There is no mathematical or, or formula that relates the current to the voltage. In fact, an ideal voltage source produces this same voltage regardless of what the current is. So what do we do? Well, let's just go ahead and identify a variable. We'll call it I, representing the current leaving V1 and going to the right. This is inconsistent with, our, with the philosophy of node voltage analysis, where we wanted to write everything in terms of our node voltage variables. We'll see here in just a second that this I is going to cancel, but for now, let us call that I its reference leaving the node there, so it will be represented over here as a positive I, and the sum of those three currents equals zero. Now let's write the node equation over here at the right-hand node. Starting with the uh, current leaving the node coming down to the 8 ohm resistor, we have V2 divided by 8, and then we have this 2 amp source coming in, so that's going to be minus 2. And then we also have now I, the current in this branch. Well, this time it's entering the right-hand node, so we'll represent it with a minus I. And the sum of those three currents must equal 0. Note that we can eliminate this I term by adding these two equations. Let's go ahead and do that. We then get... V1 minus 4 divided by 2 plus V1 over 4. Again, the I's add to 0. Then we have the other two terms down here plus V2 over 8. Then minus 2 equals 0. So we've eliminated the I, but in the process we've gone from having two equations down to just one equation, yet we still have the two unknowns, V1 and V2. We get the second equation by realizing that because there's this ideal source between V1 and V2, V1 and V2 are not independent of each other. In fact, we can say that V2 is equal to the voltage of V1 going up 18 volts, or that V2 is equal to V1 plus 18 volts. That then, we're going to refer to that as the supernode equation. That becomes our second equation in terms of V1 and V2 that will allow us to solve this circuit. Let's clean this up here just a little bit. Combining like terms, we have V1 times 1 half plus 1 fourth. We have only one V2 term, that's V2 times 1 eighth. Now our constants, we have a negative 4 over 2, that gives us a negative 2, and another minus 2, which we take to the other side as a positive 4. Combining a half plus a fourth, that gives us three-fourths V1 plus V2 times one-eighth, one-eighth equals four. Now that we've got this cleaned up a little bit, let's substitute V2 here in this equation with the relationship that we came up with here. And we're left with then V1 times three-fourths plus replacing V2 with V1 plus 18 times 1 eighth is equal to 4. 
once again, let's combine like terms. We have v1 here times the 3 fourths, and then over here we have 1 eighth v1 that we need to add in, so plus 1 eighth. We've eliminated the v2 term, yet we have a constant term now here of 18 eighths, which is the same as 9 fourths. When we subtract 9 fourths from both sides, we're left with here on the right hand side 7 fourths. Solving this for V1, we get that V1 is equal to 2 volts. And now that we know V1, we can determine that V2 is 18 volts greater than V1, or V2 is equal to uh, 20 volts. 18 volts plus 2 is 20 volts. Notice, now that we've done this, let's go back to the circuit and look at this super node as one single node and add the currents that are leaving the super node. Starting on this side of the super node, we have a current leaving the in this branch here, which we know to be simply V1 minus 4, minus 4 divided by 2. Add to that the current leaving the super node coming down here through the 4 ohm resistor, which is V1 divided by 4. Now, you'll notice that this current I doesn't leave the super node. In fact, it just is contained with it. <laughs> you can, if you will, think of it as leaving one part of the super node and ending up in the other part of the super node, but I does not leave the super node. So we come over here and, and account for these other two, or the currents in these other two branches. The current coming down here through the 8 ohm resistor is V2 divided by 8. And then, of course, we have the two amps going in there, which we account for as a minus 2 equals 0. Notice that writing this equation in the context of the supernode gives us exactly the same equation that we came up with when we wrote the individual node equations and combined them to eliminate i. What that means, and this is always true, we, can, we don't have to do this this uh, intermediate step of writing the equations and adding them, we can simply account for the currents leaving the supernode and write the equation in for or summing those currents. Then, of course, the second equation comes just as it did over here, relating the v1 to v2. We've got the v1, or we've got two equations in two unknowns as we had over here, and from there on, the calculations are exactly the same.